Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Router 2 Brief. This is going to be a vlog style video. I don't like the word vlog for some reason. It reminds me of like a teenage girl sitting on her bed, typing in her diary. Doesn't matter. Just wanted to give you an update on the 125 gallon uh, saltwater aquarium. Aquarium looks really good, but the glass is a little dirty. As you can see, the guys are following me because they want to eat. It's only 10 in the morning. You got the Fowlery Tang, my favorite dude. Nasso Tang, my favorite dude. The Sailfin Tang, my favorite dude. Yellow Tang, my favorite dude. Coal Tang, favorite dude. Little, little tiny clown. Uh, another guy, Da Vinci, Picasso. <clears throat> There's another dude up here somewhere. There he is in the corner. And then the two big Ocellaris, they're all getting along great, never any fights. Um, they picked this uh, bok choy clean, that was three leaves of bok choy. Oh, the fox face, my other favorite dude. Star polyps are doing good. <clears throat> Large frog spawn, about nine inches wide, that's doing really good. These guys are doing really good. Duncan corals open quite a bit. That's because the nitrates are probably about five. When the nitrates were at zero, they did close up just a little more. The tentacles looked a little, they didn't look as loose as they do now. They looked a little like frayed slightly. Seems like when they're at five nitrates, they're the best. Cause you know, corals do better when the water, oh, when the water is not crystal clear. Um, so I haven't done a water change in two weeks because I do it weekly, a 15 gallon water change, mainly just to vacuum the sand. Um, I haven't done anything because I threw my back out Ugh. and I've just been chilling on the couch for like five days as you guys know. Um, here's a little hammer. It was doing not the best, but it's it's coming back to life. I relocated it a bit higher on the rock so the light, the LEDs can hit it. The glass is a little dirty. I need to clean it. As you can see, the back has got like the algae on it. I've been letting that go. It's, it's kind of a bitch getting to the back of the aquarium, and I really wish I would have left enough room, but there's only like maybe eight inches clearance between the wall. It, I wish I would have moved it out further by a foot. I, I didn't want it sticking out into the room. I, I wish I would have. Um, so a little bit of news. What I'm going to do is, okay, I started out with this, ma sorry, I started out with this mag float, you know, and it does a really good job at cleaning. Sorry, dude. It does a really good job at cleaning the glass. Not so good on the green algae because it's just you know meant to clean the glass with the velcro you know and if if it detaches it just floats to the top no big deal it's magnetized so <clears throat> I did a review on this before I purchased ah, let me get down here I purchased the flipper and this is pretty much the same as the mag float but it's got a blade on the inside that doesn't hurt if you touch it so I mean, this does a good job, but I'm not happy with it. Like, look at the, the algae on the glass. Watch this. This is a recently changed blade. It's, it's not doing anything. It's just not doing anything. Not doing anything. Still there. I mean, so it's like, you know what, forget that. <sighs> um, that's enough of that. So what I'm going to do, I've been doing some reading. I've always loved the mag float and they have the ultra strong mag float. That's like much wider by twice the amount and they've got a sharper blade. It presses down on the glass a lot easier, um, a lot harder. And I did, I've read some reviews on that mag float with the blade and that's like 70 bucks. I really don't want to spend 70 bucks, but I am going to get it. And I've read a lot of reviews where people say it just takes the coralline algae, which is the purple stuff on the rock, 
it takes that off the glass and the green algae just removes it like it's butter so I'm gonna be getting that and I'll, I'll show you guys once it arrives but I just wanted to give you a little tank update here let's go below just show you guys what's going on with the underneath so I used to have a little refugium in here but no longer that's why I still have the lamp um, I'm just going to leave it in here because it's handy when I'm working on stuff, which there's not much to work on. As you guys know, I pretty much just have like two sumps. I have a 20 gallon <clears throat> aquarium that I got from Petco and they had their dollar per gallon sale. So this 20 gallon aquarium by Aquion cost me, uh, and it's glass. It's a great tank, 20 bucks. Um, inside this 20 gallon aquarium, I have the Go Aquarium brand protein skimmer, the G3000. This is rated up to a 300 gallon aquarium to skim the shit and gunk out of your aquarium's water from the sump. This is a sump. Um, for those of you who don't know how it works, the water from your aquarium up top here flows through pre cut holes in the glass down through my rod or tube into this aquarium which is a sump the water is then filtered and skimmed and all the nasty shit bubbles up into this collection cup which you'll unscrew as needed usually every three or four days for me you'll dump this out clean it out with a toothbrush and then you'll put this back on and then it just continues to clean I don't have any filtration media such as sump socks or anything like that a lot of people really really like the sump socks and I like them too because it captures all the hard material and all the uneaten food and fish shit and it usually um, is right here and and this tube goes through a ring where the sop, sock sump is I don't have any more sock sumps or I would, sump socks or I would show you they're just really long, white, thick felt socks. Looks like a long Christmas stocking without the toe. And the water flows through it. And these things have to be changed every three days. They get black and they get clogged. And if they overflow, you'll have some problems because you don't want that shit literally going back into your water and being pumped back into your tank, all right? So I don't have any filter media at all. So there's nothing for me to clean except emptying this out every three days. I like it simple like that. And a lot of people say, well, if you don't have mechanical filtration like a sump sock or a sponge or anything like that, then you're going to get debris and shit floating in your water and your water won't be clear. Um, I don't have that problem. The water, I know the, the walls don't and the glass doesn't look good. Don't look good. The water... I don't have any bubbles for the most part and the water is clear. I just used the turkey baster to blast off the rocks. So that's why you'll see some debris kind of floating around in the water. But if I didn't do that, it would have been really, really clear water. Hey guys, how you guys doing? Good boys, good boys, good boys. He's looking for food. Um, so that's it. Now, people say they don't like sump socks because they're a hassle to clean, they're dirty, they're filthy as hell. Um, you turn them inside out, you throw them in the washing machine on rinse cycle only. Two cycles of two, so four rinses inside out, then you let them dry, then you put them in. Some people use bleach, I used to do that. It's just extra step I didn't want to do. I do like sump socks, but I hated the cleaning hassle, which is why they're gone. And I don't have to clean anything now. So the water just simply falls into here and any debris that's in the bottom, I take my hand and I just churn it around so it kicks it up off the bottom so the protein skimmer gets it and it just brings it into the collection cup. And I take that cup out and I rinse it every uh, few days as needed, see? I did this yesterday and it's about like an eighth filled. Now, I like to keep the bubbles here and as the bubbles rise, they'll pop, resulting in this thick foam and all the shit gets collected in this removable cup. You guys know that, but that's for the news. 
This determines how high or low the water will be in this cup. So if I turn it this way, the water level will go down. If I turn it this way, it'll go up. You wanna, that's how you tune your protein skimmer because too high and it will overflow into the cup and you're gonna have to change this daily. Right now I've got it set so it's a nice skim and I change it about every three days. All right, <clears throat> let me try to sit down here. Shit, man. I still do have the uh, bio pellet reactor. It's really not doing much, but I am going to keep it in the aquarium because I'm too lazy to remove it. The bio pellet reactor removes the nitrates from your water. How does it work? These bio pellets are used to feed the anaerobic beneficial bacteria that is in your aquarium. You feed the anaerobic bacteria, the bacteria removes the nitrates in your water. Nitrates are bad, as I've said in the past. Um, nitrates will harm your fish in high doses, like I'm talking 80 to 100 or more. Nitrates of 20 or more will harm your coral. Coral, ideally, if they're hard coral, hard coral, which I don't have because I don't care for it. Hard coral is what it is. It's hard. It looks like rock. Hard coral needs pristine water of zero nitrates. Softies, soft corals such as these, my favorites, they require like five nitrates or z to zero, preferably a little above zero. They thrive when nitrates are a little higher than zero. So I've got that running. You don't need to do anything with this except turn it off, disconnect the hosing, and clean this out because the water gets pumped from your sump into here. You gotta keep these churning, the bacteria get fed, and then the water gets pumped out into the sump, which this is my second sump. Now you wanna have that water that's pumping out of the bio pellet reactor. Here it is, it's a little dark. That's like water filled with like the nitrates that are being ejected. So I like to place that right about there at the intake of the sump. I'll fix it later. Um, here is my other protein skimmer. This is my eShops S200. Same thing over here. The water's coming from the tank into the second sump. It's getting churned and the waste is being pulled to the cup. You can see it's halfway. And I did that one like a couple days ago, so it's about time to uh, remove that guy and clean it. So a lot of waste is being collected from both sumps. There's no mechanical filtration, no sponges or anything. Um, and that's that's kind of a positive in a way because then the amphipods, they can be brought back into your main tank through the return pump. And also any uneaten food gets brought back into the aquarium as well. All right, so that's what I've got going. I highly recommend this Go Aquarium G3000. It's only like $160, which is so damn cheap, and it skims like a beast. Um, that's about it. That's all I really wanted to show you guys now, just like a quick little update. Um, what I, The only thing I'm doing is uh, water changes of 15 gallons once a week, which I said, which replenishes you know, calcium used by the coral, magnesium. But here's a little thing that I also do. I dose table sugar is what I've said. I dose two teaspoons of sugar, one teaspoon for every 60 gallons. Now, you determine what's best for you. I found that if I dose, you know, if you have a 75 gallon, I would dose one teaspoon. You could try one and a half, but I would still go like one teaspoon. So I dose this every day. Once the nitrates are at zero, I test them and I might dose just one teaspoon every day, okay? Not a big deal. And what I also found helps the corals out quite a bit is if I dose this, Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate. I just got this from the grocery store. I just got this from the grocery store. I dose uh, one or two teaspoons of this every other day and that's enough to keep the magnesium level up and the corals really thrive. Now, 
Magnesium is a tricky thing, as is calcium and alkalinity levels, but basically, calcium in your water is used by corals to build their skeletal structure, make them stronger, etc. The more coral you have in your aquarium, and especially the purple rock, which is coralline algae, if you can get that in your tank, you know your tank is doing pretty good. Um, the coralline algae sucks up the calcium like crazy. So if you have coralline algae on your rock and you want to keep it going and you want to keep it spreading, you've got to make sure you've got the right amount of calcium in your tank at all times. Around 450 is what I keep mine at. Um, now, because these corals and algae, especially if you have hard corals um, or anything that requires a lot of calcium, you're going to probably want to dose magnesium. Magnesium basically, for lack of better words, it's hard to describe, but kind of acts as like a buffer. It, it allows your aquarium to utilize the calcium more, all right? So it kind of stabilizes the calcium. I can't really think of a better way to explain it. If you guys can think of a better way to explain it, by all means, please do. But um, I dose one teaspoon of magnesium every other day, and within half a day or less, my corals really perk up. They're flowing, they're more full. If I don't dose the magnesium, I notice that you know they're not as uh, lively and full. Oh, look who's there. It's, you can't really see him, it's the Mandarin Gobi. What's up, dude? That dude's hanging out. Man, Mandarin Gobi's doing really well. Um, I was nervous to add him because, you know, I thought that there wouldn't be enough amphipods or, or pods for him to eat. But I'm going to clean that glass. I'm going to order that uh, mag float. I'm going to do a video on that so you guys can see. But let me know if you have any questions or comments or if you have any statements that you can better this video with like if you have any information on magnesium or whatnot but that's what I've uh, noticed recently I love that frog spawn man that's like my favorite coral it's doing well um, I really want these star polyps to spread they're starting to grow on the rock a little bit um, anyway that's it thanks for watching kind of a little bit of a babble there but wanted to give you guys an update on the 125 Kind of thinking about going with a 265. Not exactly sure when that's going to happen. Um, a 265 gallon, this is a 125. I'm a fan of the six foot long tanks because tangs and all fish, they swim from back and forth all day. They like to explore. Rarely do they swim up and down. You want to have the longer the tank, the better. So it's going to be uh, 265 is six feet long, just like this. It's the same height, but the width is twice as long. So they can turn around easier, swim easier. So you're looking at the same length and wider. Um, I don't like the higher tanks. I mean, I like looking at them and they're really impressive, but to clean them, I don't like having my armpit in there. I mean, cleaning this one, it's pretty much most of my arm. You have a taller tank, your armpit's getting wet. I don't like that. Um, so anyway guys, that's it. Happy reefing. Sorry this video was so long. I know a lot of you guys won't mind. I'm going to feed these dudes uh, a little snack. And uh, that's it. Subscribe if you haven't already so you're updated on when new videos come out. And uh, take care. Thanks again.